Welcome back to chapter six. This chapter starts the second unit or the second part of our course. And in this part, this unit, we're going to be looking at scatter plots and what we can do from them. Um, cor uh, not correlation, uh, regression, um, making things linear, um, and then just scatter plots, which is what we're going to be looking at in this chapter. It's just on scatter plots, association co and correlation. Um, a lot of it is stuff that you've probably seen before, although things like correlation get a little bit, uh, a little bit dicey sometimes. Um, so let's take a look. We have a couple learning targets this time. Answer conceptual questions involving scatter plots, association, correlation. Use scatter plots to analyze association correlation and then calculate and interpret the correlation coefficient. So, scatter plots, what are they? Well, I mean, they look kind of like this. It's just a whole bunch of points plotted. We just, we plot points. That's what we do. Um, what it is, is this is using bivariate data. So far in this course, we have used univariate data. That would be just one variable. Now we're going to use bivariate data, which is just two variables, and specifically two quantitative variables. That's very important. You can't do this with categorical variables. It does not work. So we're using two quantitative variables to, um, to graph them with scatter plots. One of them goes on the x-axis. This is the explanatory variable. And then the y-axis is the response variable. I know in most of our classes, we call it the independent and dependent variable. But in statistics, independent and dependent have another meaning when we get to probabilities. And so we use the explanatory variable that explains what the response variable is going to do, or hopefully explains it, tries to explain it. Um, there are things we will do specifically in the next chapter where it is very important that you have each very like the correct variable on the right axis. In this chapter, it actually doesn't make too much of a difference because the variables are interchangeable for what we'll be doing. Um, but it is good practice to get them into the the uh, right place. Sometimes it could go either way. Sometimes it's a very obvious thing. Um, time would usually be on in the explanatory uh, axis, the x-axis, because that would explain what's happening. Um, in this case, we have state median household income and the state mean per capita income. And so it it could have easily gone the other direction, and we would only know to put it this way because we're trying to explain the mean per capita income based on the median income. So it, it would have to be in the problem to tell us which is which. Uh, notice, though, that our axes are labeled, and in this case, they even have a, um, a scale. It's by 1,000. Both of them happen to be by thousand, um, so we're not actually talking about twenty six dollars and twenty eight dollars and thirty dollars. We're talking about in the thousands. Um, also, notice that the origin is not in our graph. It does not need to be in the graph um, because a lot of times the origin actually has no meaning in statistics, especially if the x axis is a year never ever go down to year zero if you're talking about the actual year. If you're talking about years since something's happened, you can do year zero. But if you're talking about the actual year zero, it's not going to have any meaning in the problem itself. Um, and so the y-intercept, when we get to lines, won't have much of a meaning here because it's not going to be on the graph. It's going to be way down in year zero, and it doesn't really make much of a difference. Um, so just uh, make sure that we're graphing the part of the graph that actually matters, the graph with the points. Um, and each axis needs to be consistently labeled. So 
In this case, they both go up by twos, but what's important is the x-axis is going up by the same amount for the same distance. The y-axis is going up the same amount for the same distance. Um, they don't have to be the same amounts between the x and the y, but each axis must be, must be consistent. And so, those are scatter plots. You have made scatter plots in the past. I know this for a fact, unless you skipped all of the problems in those chapters. So describing scatter plots, we have a few different ways we describe scatter plots. We have the direction. The direction is either going to be positive or negative. Positive is going to be a general upward trend. Negative is going to be a general downward trend. We're going to see examples of some of these here in a second, too. The form. Right now, and in general, the form, you have two options. It could be linear, which will never mean perfectly linear, by the way, because real-world data doesn't come perfectly anything. Linear means it has a general linear form. And the other way, or the other option, nonlinear. I mean, that could be quadratic, exponential, cubic, um, square root, logarithmic. A lot of different things could fall under the nonlinear category. But right now, what we're doing and what we're not doing is either linear or not linear. Um, in chapter six, seven, eight, nine, we will learn how to deal with some of these nonlinear graphs. Um, but in general, we're looking at linear ones. The strength. Strength, it can be described as a few different things. It could be a weak strength. It could be um, weak. It could be moderate. It could be strong. Now, that is how close to a line is it? Like, how far spread out? Um, so if it's really close to a line, it's got a strong association. So the strength uh, would be a strength of association. Um, if it's, like, if they're all spread out, and we can't really see a line much, it would have a weak association. Now, the problem with those is that they're really, really vague. And I know we've had some vague type things in the past as well. And those are not fun because, well, is it strong? Is it weak? Is it moderate? I don't know. We're going to have a number to describe it as well. Um, and sometimes, like, you may have the same, the same association strength, but depending on what you're looking for, like it could be super, it could be a strong one, like you're excited it got this close, or it could be a really weak one because it should really be closer and that's kind of a failure in your test. So um, we don't usually use these all that often. Um, and then outliers. Always want to pay attention for outliers. Now outliers can be different things in statistics. So, my headset just beeped at me and I realized that it's not actually plugged in and you guys are just listening to me over the built-in laptop. So, there we go. That's a complete and total uh, sidebar on that one. Um, anyway, outliers. There's a couple different ways outliers can happen. Um, we have outliers if we have a bunch of points. Hey, we have kind of these. It's kind of forming a, a positive um, linear association. I'd say this is kind of strong, kind of moderate. So a couple different types of outliers. We could have the type up there that doesn't match the pattern at all. That changes things. It changes things a lot. We could also have the type of outlier over here. That one actually matches the pattern. It's what we would see there, but it will still affect 
a lot of the stuff that we're looking at. So both of those two things are outliers. They're unusual points. Even though that second one matches what we would expect to be there, still an outlier. Um, so we have some, some scatter plots. This one, it's a positive direction because it's going in a positive manner. This is going to be, it looks linear, right? Because it's basically in a line. This is a strong association because these are all, I mean, I could draw a line there and the line basically matches. And there's not really any outliers. So it's positive, linear, strong with no outliers. This one is going to have a negative association to it um, because it's going down. It has that general downward trend. Um, it still looks linear. It looks like it might have a slight curve to it, kind of going that way, but it looks pretty close to linear as well. Like I would not feel too uncomfortable doing linear type operations with this. Um, I would not want to um, extend it much beyond what we're looking at, but with what we're dealing with, linear looks okay. Um, this would be a more moderate strength. Like it's nowhere near as strong as that first one. And again, there doesn't look to be any outliers. I mean, we have like that one's kind of lower, but it's still pretty close to the rest of them. And then this one has a, um, it's a positive association because we do, it is going up there. Um, a linear, if you get rid of these ones specifically, it looks more linear, but actually it, a lot of stuff goes away there too. Um, the association, I'd say this association is pretty weak, specifically based off of that stuff I circled. Um, outliers, we've got a few of them down there, one of them up there. Um, those might very well affect what we're looking at. So as we're describing our scatter plots, we're looking for the general direction, the form, um, a strength, which we'll talk about here in a second, and then looking for some outliers. So correlation, that is the strength of the association that I was talking about. Um, so it's the strength of association, association. Um, and there, it is a number, which means that it has a formula to find it. And this is one that just kind of rolls right off the tongue. I mean, R is, R is the correlation coefficient. It's called the correlation coefficient is the specific number, and it's always an R. That's the variable. Why is it an R? Well, I mean, obviously, it's correlation, right? It, I mean, that's the third and fourth letter of the word. Makes sense. Um, so R equals the sum of the X minus X bar over SX times Y minus Y bar over SY all over N minus 1. So basically, what you do is you find all the Z scores for your X values and for your Y values. You multiply each of them together for the associated points. And then you find the average of those, except you divide by n minus 1 instead of n, just like we did for the standard deviation. Um, this is not something that you are going to be finding by hand, unless you have like three to five points. And we never have three to five points, because that's not realistic. Like who has, like that's not even data, that's a couple numbers. Um, so this is something that you will be finding in a calculator. I'm going to show you in our tech stuff how to do it. Um, it shows you in the book how to do it on a TI. Uh, basically, you do the linear regression, and it, show, it gives you your correlation coefficient. Um, you can also do it in StatCrunch. So you can very possibly find out where it is all on your own, um, but I will be showing you that um, this week. I can't remember if it's the first or second one, but I will be showing you that because um, you're not going to find it by hand. That would be silly. Um, so some examples of correlation. So first of all, correlation is always going to be between negative one and positive one. It's negative one if it's a negative slope, like uh, I'm going to change out of red. 
like this one here is almost a negative one. So negative means it has that negative association, that negative direction, it's going downward. Um, when it's negative one or positive one, it means that it is a perfectly straight line. I would not expect it to get that. That would be like if you found, if you had an equation, you made a table of points and graph the points. Like it perfectly matches a linear equation. Not realistic in the real world. So, um, but negative 0.99, that's a really strong correlation. Um, positives, like so the left side here are positives. Notice we have a general upward trend. Negatives, we have a general downward trend. Um, even this one has a general downward trend, kind of. It's really weak, but it's there. Um, a correlation of zero means that there is no linear association. Now, correlation of zero can be very tricky, and we're going to see that in just a second, because um, we have some notes on correlation. The first, there's no units. The correlation coefficient is a number. The correlation is 0.9. There's no unit there. It doesn't matter what it is, no unit. Um, it's always between negative one and one. And it's not a complete description because it doesn't tell us a lot of stuff. I mean, it, ha it's, it tells us the strength of the linear relationship. However, with a correlation of zero, we could have one that looks like this one over here where they're just kind of all spread out. You can't even tell what they are. We could have a correlation of zero that looks like this. Is it going up or is it going down? Oh, it's kind of doing both. It's going up and then it's going down. Does it have a, a pattern to it? Yeah. Could you make predictions based off of it? Yeah, it's a perfect quadratic. You can do all sorts of stuff off of it. But as far as a linear relationship goes, there's no linear relationship here. And so the correlation is zero. So just because it's zero doesn't mean that there's no pattern or there's no association there. Um, another time it could equal zero is if we have a horizontal line of points. The correlation is zero. Like it's the x value, the x variable has no effect on the y variable because it's always that one thing. That doesn't necessarily mean that that's a useless piece of information though. It doesn't mean that it's scattered like we saw up at that one. It just means that there's no linear relationship, like X does not affect Y. Um, so that's a little bit of correlation, some conditions for correlation. Quantitative variables. The variables have to be quantitative. Categorical variables, like they don't have z-scores, they don't have means, they don't have all that kind of stuff that we use to find correlation. And this is one of the biggest mistakes people make. They like to use the word correlation um, so they sound smart, basically, and they misuse it. And anyone who's taken a basic statistics course just thinks they're a fool. Um, so you pretty soon you'll be able to watch the news, you will be able to... Um, listen to people talking about correlations. You'll be able to be in the staff meetings that I have to sit through and listen to them talking about the correlation between whether kids ride the bus and whether they're late to school. I'm like, nope, nope, that is not a correlation. Definitely not a correlation. Um, it's an association perhaps, but it's not a correlation. So you must use must use two quantitative variables. Ooh. There's a giant spider crawling across my floor right now. So if I suddenly scream, that's why. Um, straight enough. Remember, a correlation describes a linear relationship. 
And so in order for it to have any meaning, it needs to be a linear relationship that we're describing. So if we have that quadratic, the correlation is not going to describe it. We're going to get that zero. So why would we even use it? Um, and so is it straight enough to bother using? Now, that doesn't mean it has to be perfectly straight, but is it straight enough? And no outliers. Now, outliers being that these are made using the mean standard deviations, things like that, outliers can have a huge effect on your correlation, either direction. An outlier can, oh, that spider's getting closer. An outlier, <laughs> I can't pause or I have to redo the whole thing. Um, if we have a fairly strong correlation like this, and then we put an outlier up here, that's going to weaken the correlation a ton. All of a sudden that correlation goes from really strong to possibly a very moderate correlation. Um, it'll lower that correlation coefficient. However, if we have a few points right here, these four points have absolutely no correlation. Like if I graphed them right to make that perfect little square, the correlation would be zero. If I put another point up here, that's going to make it a really strong linear relationship. That's going to change the correlation from zero to something in the 0.9 realm. So um, it can have it can have effects either direction. Um, Correlation properties. We've seen some of these, but I thought I'd refresh or review them really quickly as well. Um, sign of correlation coefficient gives the direction of the association, the positive or negative. It's always between negative one and one, and negative one and one are both if it's exactly a line. And so we don't see those very often. Um, and we talked about it being zero. Um, X and Y are treated equally. It doesn't matter. I mean, you look at the equation, we could switch the X's and the Y's and it's just multiplication. So it would be the same. So it doesn't matter which is on the X axis, which is on the Y axis. The correlation is the same. Um, there's no units. Um, it's not affected by changes to the center of the spread. So if we had um, a correlation in Fahrenheit, we change it to with one of our variables was Fahrenheit. We changed that to Celsius. And so we did all the calculations to do that, the correlation would stay the same because all we would really do is change the values on the, the axis and the shape and the distribution of those points would stay the same. They wouldn't move at all. Um, it measures the strength of a linear relationship. I don't know if I've stressed that yet. Um, that linear relationship is hugely important. Um, and it's sensitive to outliers. Talked about that. Um, and then basically, finally, um, we have correlation uh, does not mean causation. Um, though sometimes you can have accidental correlation too, like it, things look correlated, but there's really no good reason for them. Um, that kind of comes in to this as well, um, because sometimes we can have things that are like highly correlate, like there's a high correlation. So, hey, there's a big relationship here, but that does not mean that it's causation. Why is that important? Well, a lot of what we're going to try and do is we're going to see if we can establish cause and effect relationships. And that's something that the human brain does automatically. We want to see those cause effect relationships. We do it all the time without even thinking about it. Sometimes we're right, sometimes we're not. Um, but people like to take that correlation and just make it causation. One of my favorite examples is there is a high, um, there's a high correlation between the number of shark attacks. Attacks in Florida and ice cream sales in Illinois. Um, and what ha what we see, if we look at these two variables, is that 
the more shark attacks there are, the uh, it's not exactly that linear, but the more shark attacks there are, the more people buy ice cream in Illinois. Is that because they're celebrating the shark attacks in Florida? I don't know, maybe. I mean, Florida man does this. Um, but do the shark attacks actually cause the ice cream sales in Illinois to go up? Probably not. I mean, that would be a pretty, a pretty uh, strange thing to happen. And so what we find a lot of times, even if there's a high correlation, um, is that we have something called a lurking variable. That's just something else that might be acting on the system. And there's a number of types of lurking variables depending on how they're acting. Um, but just a lurking variable is a general thing. And we'll, we'll be talking a lot about that um, a bit later uh, in a previous or in a, a future chapter. Um, but like what else could be causing the number of shark attacks in Florida to go up and the number of ice cream sales to go up in Illinois? Maybe it's summertime. In summertime, more people go swimming. More people get attacked by sharks. In summertime, more people buy ice cream. And so there's other things that could be that could be um, causing it. So we don't want to just go straight to the thought that just because there's a high correlation means that it's a cause-effect relationship, um, because that will get us into trouble. Um, and I think that's about it. Yeah, we have the, the what can go wrong. There's, it's a great what can go wrong section in this chapter, which I'm sure you're going to be reading. Um, we've covered a lot of them. It just goes over to like, you know, correlation and association don't mean the same thing. You have to make sure you're talking about quantitative variables. Um, and then don't confuse correlation with causation. Make sure the association is linear. Um, don't assume it's linear just because the correlation coefficient is high. You always want to look at the graph. Like looking at the graph is your first, um, your first assessment. The correlation coefficient just gives you a value to use as a measurement of that. Um, and beware of outliers, because outliers can do some crazy things to our correlation coefficient. So this is chapter six. Um, I think as far as chapters go, this one's possible. It's one of the quicker and easier ones that we've we've looked at. Um, so uh, again, in class, I will show you how to use the technology if you don't figure it out first. Um, but until then, keep working problems, keep asking questions, and as always, happy mathing.